Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Namaste. So, welcome to this live session uh, on organization development and change in 21st century. I am receiving uh, some of the queries. I have also received few before the session. So, I would like to give some more time if some more queries uh, are on the way. We will talk about something very pertinent and important uh, from the OE point of view. We all know at something uh, unheard of, something unprecedented has happened in last one year. We have gone through a major crisis uh, which is uh, because of this COVID-19 so new virus. That's why scientists have called this novel COVID uh, uh, virus. And because of that, we see major disruption in organizational life, in personal lives, as well as in the social lives. So, I thought this is an opportunity for, uh, for all of us who are interested in organization development, who are interested in the field of organization development to look at what OD can uh, offer and how the field of OD can be helpful in designing some of the interventions, some of the relevant interventions which can be uh, of the OD nature and can be useful for the organizations and individuals. So for a few minutes, I will be sharing some of these things. Meanwhile, some more queries will come and I will take uh, those queries one by one. So, first thing is we need to understand that uh, may I request uh, NPTEL team to help me in uh, changing the slides. Can, I, can you help me in changing the slides on the system? Yeah. So, in 2020, we have endured a global pandemic. There is a massive economic crisis and a widespread social unrest as well. We have seen the pictures of uh, thousands of laborers just uh, walking on the feet to reach to their native places from the metropolitan cities. These are the images probably we can never forget in our lifetime. So this was a major social economic crisis as well. And lack of work boundaries. And we all who are in the white collar jobs, many of us are in the white collar jobs who are required to work on their systems, being in the office. We also have gone through a major uh, stress because of the uh, lack of boundaries we experienced in, in our work time and uh, uh, in our way of uh, delivery of our uh, KRAs about the organization, and our KRAs about our business or about our work. So because of these things, a lot of transitions uh, were required. And we have also seen a major changes and how organizations are responding to those. Organizations have responded to these things with the technological inter innovations. Many of the organizations could quickly change their business models, quickly uh, customize their offerings or started communicating more extensively on the online platform. So they, they uh, initiated major technological innovations. 
uh, in some of the organizations we have seen mis uh, business model disruption so school is the biggest example um, all the schooling all the major schooling activities has shifted uh, or educational activity shifted uh, mostly to the online mode and uh, earlier we never thought that a test can be conducted case analysis could be conducted or simulations uh, followed by the uh, interpretations of the result could all everything could be conducted online but we have seen that happening uh, so there is a business model disruption education field is one example but we see it in many other field like banking or uh, uh, or customer delivery in fmcgs they have shifted to the uh, they have changed and made their supply chain much more robust to uh, to serve their customers uh, and interact with their customers online we have also seen social social inequality uh, how some sections of the society who are not uh, uh, so strong and so uh, well off economically they are suffering disproportionately higher than comparison to those who are uh, who have the means to meet their daily needs more comfortably we have we are seeing the workforce automation so a lot of processes are getting automated and uh, so there is an end to end uh, uh, redefinition or end to end uh, recrafting of the processes and as a result of that we also see different kind of metrics to assess the workplace effectiveness and efficiency etc permanent shift in the consumer preference has also happened many of us stopped taking newspapers and many of us are not going to restart uh, newspapers and we have realized that uh, many such things which we thought are inevitable can be done online and their our needs we have shifted to the different forms of media or we have shifted to different forms of education and interaction and all that so there is a permanent shift in the consumer preferences and ways of working as well we all are working most of us are working from home uh, so these are the major changes visible we need to understand the concept from the holy perspective what we call organizational healing so on organization healing pauley and uh, peterit Uh, wrote about in 2008 and this is a process of repairing and restoring the social relationships of an organization after any crisis and uh, covid is that kind of crisis this was written this was been talked about for many many decades but this was formalized and uh, systematized in the writings of pauley and pederet in 2008 what is organization healing they suggest organization healing meaning people or uh, people in the organization go through different stages so first stage is where organizations deploy the resources those resources can be internal resources or external resources to contain and minimize the damage in this stage the organization need to portray a solidarity with the affected people and take concrete actions to restore the processes we see that happened in covid quickly organizations announced their helpline numbers they are uh, and they upgraded their systems they upgraded their uh, uh, communication uh, infrastructure uh, they quickly formed the self help groups uh, started conversing about what is what people are going on and all that and that was this this, this is the stage 1 while uh, for meeting any crisis uh, and to move towards healing next stage is connection with the other organization entities uh, to uh, has to be reestablished and during this integration process some new systems and processes may also emerge you must have seen in many organizations in order to carry on their business they have established the uh, business relationships or uh, informal relationships with other vendors other kind of uh, service providers so for example fmcg industry uh, a lot of fmcg companies wouldn't have such a close tie up with the 
uh, online service providers which we have seen in this crisis so this is another form this is this is the part of the healing process organizations have to connect the people have to connect with each other and different departments and different subunits have to reconnect with each other and uh, so that they can leverage and they can help each other uh, third stage of the healing is new system integration and remaining organization and the normal operations are restored uh, we just discussed that many of the new processes and systems will be part will be permanent part of the or fairly permanent uh, or long term uh, ways of working of the organizations even when the crisis uh, gets over and we hope uh, that uh, the vaccine trial of which has already begun will be effective and will be available to all of us in uh, uh, in the near future organization healing requires four mechanism as pauli and skilly have uh, suggested the mechanism includes empathy intervention collective effort and leadership empathy is the first and foremost thing this is about the culture of care concern and employee focus that would support the affected employees and thereby healing the social relationships so that's the first thing uh, first element of uh, organization healing second intervention uh, is uh, direct and indirect steps taken to provide the immediate assistance during a crisis uh, then organizations after uh, having recognizing after recognizing the importance of concern care and re energizing our uh, uh, and reminding the organization members to follow these values and reflect these things in the behavior the next step is to think about what is to be done uh, that's a direct and indirect step uh, what is to be done in terms of the processes systems uh, looking at the different measurements of the effectiveness etc third is collective effort no healing no organization healing can be done just by just in the top down manner organization healing requires people organizations to uh, people in the organization to collaborate and work together and uh, no healing process is possible without leadership organization leaders are the most important factors the strongest factor to create the desired desirable climate and culture and without desirable climate of culture which has care concern etc Uh, uh healing is not possible and the desired climate and culture cannot be created without leadership without the active role of leadership so the four mechanism of formation healing are empathy intervention collective efforts and leadership we need to recognize that crisis or particularly the uh, uh natural crisis people have the a kind of a set of people have one special type of response and that response goes through a cycle that response generally starts with uh, some heroic effort means uh, all well meaning people think whenever they face a crisis that okay the this is it but we we are going to face this challenge and let us invoke hero in us so there is a heroic response and so after the threat after the warning the next step is generally a heroic response and with that heroic response people also start getting the positive results they are they 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 see that uh, they are able to handle some aspects of the crisis if not the whole crisis but when this process goes on for a long time <clears throat> for example many of you might remember that when this uh, pandemic hit us many of us thought that probably the response uh, in the form of uh, total lockdown was uh, exaggerated response or uh, 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 too much of the sincerity but uh, later on it proved to be the right strategy but what is uh, but we also might remember that whenever this uh, this crisis hit us we thought that okay it's a matter of few months and we can handle it some of us also thought that okay it is very sad for the people who uh, who are infected but uh, i'll we will remain safe 
we will follow the we will follow the instructions and we will also uh, able to uh, meet the crisis we will able to deal with the crisis by behaving in a way which is required like following the instructions for taking the precautions working from home many of us thought that okay working from home uh, though the the very cause of pandemic is sad but working from home is an opportunity for us to regain the uh, work life balance so that's a uh, that's a heroic response and but when this phase goes on for a long time we start getting disillusioned so disillusionment starts setting in and uh, that is the time when the role of leadership becomes very very important and what are the interventions we will discuss uh, just a short while from now after the disillusionment if there is a proper intervention of the leadership the next step comes which is working through the grit working through the grief using the grit and then reimagining the constructs and then and and gearing up for the new normal so generally this is the cycle through which people go through companies that have viewed the pandemic as an opportunity to mike so there is an one example some of the companies have looked at this pandemic as an opportunity to migrate to the digital technologies and some of them have been very successful in that journey i'll request uh, the ampitel team to uh, restore the display of the questions in front of my uh, screen so what are the interventions required the interventions required uh, you can start the screen sir excuse me this screen is off so we can start this thank you so od intervention for healing what are the od interventions for uh, healing some of the od interventions for healing organization healing particularly of the kind of uh, crisis we are uh, facing in the form of covid 19 crisis first is administering the antidote to disillusionment that is a bounded optimism uh, a naive optimism is not going to work we need to exercise optimism we need to embrace the optimism but that has to be bounded optimism like we need not to be impractical about the optimism we should not be over optimistic we should realize that there is a limitation uh, of the time there is a limitations of the effort so for example we all know that vaccine has come but the bounded optimism is that uh, we need also to be, to recognize that vaccine may not be available next week it will require uh, at least a month or maybe couple of months so that kind of bounded optimism is required to deal with this kind of crisis so we we have to remain optimistic but we also should not be over optimistic second is deep listening listening to each other many organizations have started uh, listening clubs they have started the healing groups healing clubs and they meet occasionally regularly and they do not only talk about work they talk about what people are going through what they are feeling what are their challenges and people share how they are uh, facing challenges uh, uh, they are facing different challenges and that's a very important quality that's a very important intervention in itself where people listen they recognize number one that they are not the only one in the crisis number two they see the different or multiple ways of handling the crisis because when they when they talk about what they are going through and people listen the listeners also sometimes share what they are doing about that crisis and secondly listening uh, is a great gift so listening itself is a is a healing uh, uh, process so uh, that helps people to hear their inner conversation and also to get advice on also to recognize that they are not alone so deep listening is very essential it is only through deep listening people realize that uh, what is causing trouble particularly the white collar workers what is causing trouble is not exactly uh, being bounded being home bound what is causing trouble is inability to manage the work and the home boundary this is the result of a listening process 
a good organizations need not to only focus on the deep listening but good organizations also are engaged into it and they and more and more organizations can do that is serving or having the pulse check about the mental health and well being as uh, so organizations can check in uh, uh, with the people how they are doing uh, in terms of their psychological well being in terms of the subjective well being may also share some of the tips may also share some of the resources and the conversation clubs conversation events are, can be organized organizations are organizing these kind of events people not only talk about what they are going through they are, they also talk about what they can do what are the possible ways of 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 enhancing or restoring their well being third type of intervention is about developing the adaptability and resilience skills we need to understand that whenever whenever there is a crisis in our life uh, maybe a personal crisis or the organizational crisis organizations uh, the people have the choice of restitution chaos and quest these are the three types of narrative generally people rely upon what is the restitution narrative whenever i am in a crisis the restitution narrative is i keep thinking about how good the days were before this crisis and we we remain stuck in the past in the past in that point of time when the crisis was not there and we keep remembering that second type of narrative when facing crisis is a chaos narrative that is deeply or very strongly rooted at present so i do not look at past that life was wonderful but i also do not look at future that life will again be better off life will again be on track and i am so stuck on what i am experiencing all around me at present and that's why uh, it is called a chaos narrative because at present we all see chaos but that is only present it also has a past and it also has a future so the third narrative is the quest narrative when i am facing a crisis the quest narrative is about thinking what this what opportunity this crisis present to me about listening about learning what can i learn in this crisis uh, you might have heard about heard this famous uh, saying that never let any crisis go unused so that is about looking at what is this situation and what it is inviting me to learn about that's a quest narrative and when i take up the when i take the help of quest narrative i am able to look at what all the possibilities in the future and whenever people rely on the quest narrative they emerge as stronger human beings after the crisis similarly you are seeing in many organizations as well those organizations which have looked at uh, this situation with the quest narrative many of them have changed their business model have have uh, redefined their work processes and uh, they are emerging as better off uh, after this crisis i understand that even uh, only quest narrative is not good enough for the organizations because if my industry has collapsed no matter how deep uh, quest narrative i uh, apply i need to ask people to leave i will not be able to support large number of employees for a long time without any business but quest narrative certainly helps to cope up helps in he- healing and helps in reducing the losses and also helps in emerging from the crisis as uh, as a winner as a victor important thing in this time is to f- to make care connection and well being as the foremost important thing here the all od intervention the most prominent objective of od intervention in the crisis time is care connection well being business targets become secondary in the time of crisis last but not the least for today's discussion is unleashing the energy by evolving the organization's operating mode as we discussed the organizations which look at the quest narrative organizations which look at the possibility narrative also start thinking about the 
redefining the processes, looking for the technological solutions, looking for the other social, technological, cultural solutions, trying out new things, uh, searching for the innovative ways of doing business, business meaning reaching out to the customer, delivering service to the customers, etc. So that's the last thing, looking at crisis as an opportunity, as a situation to have a fundamental rethinking about our business models. So these are the OD interventions possible in, at the time of crisis uh, um, and for the organization healing. Uh, this is something which I thought uh, we must discuss though it was not, it is not part of the course and uh, the questions will not, may not be asked uh, from this portion which we have just uh, finished today. Uh, we discussed about the organization healing, we not, there may, might not be any question, there might be one or two but there might not be uh, uh, as well. Uh, but uh, it is important to bring these things and connect what is going on uh, with the OD course which we have uh, gone through. Now I will take uh, some of the questions uh, uh, which are there in front of my screen. Can books, lecture series allowed in the exam hall for the reference? I think please check with the NPTEL team. I do not think the books or the lecture, this is not an open book exam, uh, so this will not be allowed. Uh, that's a NPTEL rule, you can recheck with the NPTEL team as well. Uh, only multiple choice questions will be there and uh, uh, along with the videos you uh, have a lot of other material uh, and that material is uh, helpful for the exam. You will be having 3 hour exam, uh, 50 questions will be there, each question will have 2 marks. Uh, please think carefully, you have ample time, there is no uh, hurry. To, uh, to rush through the questions, but uh, uh, read the options, read the questions carefully and choose your options uh, carefully. That will help you to perform in the exam better. I will request NPTEL team to help in re uh, getting the screen back. So if there are no other questions, we can uh, close the session. What do you think, sir? So I have, and the questions are over, so we can close the session. And this uh, session and these slides are anyway available, so you can uh, use these slides. Uh, those who wish to contact me later, they can connect me over LinkedIn. Um, you can go to my LinkedIn profile, send me the connect request and we can connect to, uh, over LinkedIn. Uh, on the school website, the School of Management IIT Bombay website has uh, my resume as well as the email IDs. So you can get the email IDs from, from there and uh, for any OD related queries, you are most welcome to. Uh, I would like to learn different intervention processes in detail. How to implement these processes? That's a that, uh, that's a question of uh, Charu. Uh, Charu, that's what we have discussed uh, throughout the courses. And uh, what is there in the uh, in the in the lectures are uh, fair description about the interventions and uh, how it is implemented. Uh, we have looked at many real life uh, incidences. We have looked at many real life uh, cases. Uh, about the interventions uh, and the application of those interventions. So please have a look at it. Uh, please also look at the sup supplementary uh, reading material uh, given on the course page. So uh, along with the textbook, there are many other readings being listed in the, uh, in the home page. Please uh, help yourself with those uh, reading materials. You will get more ideas about uh, uh, different interventions and how to implement those interventions. Uh, nonetheless, the text of Berlin Cummins is, uh, is very elaborate about the intervention. So, please read that book. Uh, this is the kind of book you may like to read multiple times to get the expertise. Uh, 
we can think about offering uh, more advanced level courses maybe uh, this is currently a 20 hour course next year we can make it a 30 hour course and we can add few more lectures at least 10 hours of material on the in this course uh, in this course uh, atul ji has asked this question scoring pattern it's a uh, 50 questions two marks each per question kind of pattern and uh, there are no negative marking and uh, all are multiple choice questions Uh, how do intergroup relations process? Intergroup relation process is uh, described in one of the lectures. Group level intervention and intergroup level intervention. Uh, please uh, go through that video. Uh, you will get uh, enough description about the intergroup group relation processes. Uh, when the additional topics are added, those will be available freely in the in the form of YouTube lectures. So you can. Uh, Help yourself with that. There are there is no negative marking. There is no negative marking for the uh, wrong answers. That is the pattern of the exam. Okay, so thank you very much. Wish you all very best. Uh, I hope you will continue this journey and keep learning about the OD intervention. It is a vast field in itself and this gives all of us a great opportunity to make positive difference to the people, groups and organization uh, which are all uh, in our surrounding and of which we are part of. So, uh, the results will be declared. Please check Manuji with the uh, NPTEL team when the result will be declared. Uh, it doesn't take much time because uh, the processing systems are pretty automated. So it doesn't take long time for results to be announced. So wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Please take good care of yourself and of the people around you. Thank you very much. So here we conclude the session. Don't you have to stop doing that? Stop doing that.